hi guys in this video we'll be discussing talent files parsing in talent and this session is going to be a practical demonstration on three of the major types of files which includes flat files then we have Microsoft Excel files and then we have JSON files so the agenda for today's tutorial is going to be divided in four sections in the first place I'll discuss talent flat files parsing and they include uh, normal CSV files then we have the talent dynamic schema so this is a utility that's provided by talent for a couple of different components with which we can read files using a dynamic approach using a dynamic schema approach and then we have talent Microsoft Excel files parsing and last we have uh, different components to parse JSON files and maybe some of you guys may be wondering what exactly we would be covering in this video tutorial so I have further broken down these four sections into following bullets for example so we take in the first place talent flat files parsing and we discuss how to centralize a files metadata so that we can reuse it later on over and over again and then parsing delimited files so this is going to be delimited files or m maybe if we want to read a file line by line or maybe if we want to read a file completely as a single string so these three major types are going to be covered and then we see how dynamic schema can be incorporated in the logic and then automatic retrieval of delimited file schema so for example if we have a very huge CSV file with 100 or 150 columns and we need to define the schema in talent so we do not have time to manually type the column and the data type of every single field so in that case we can automatically retrieve the schema of that particular file and there are going to be some additional helpful components regarding CSV files parsing in the second place uh, place we have this talent Microsoft Excel files parsing so we discuss how can we read one sheet or multiple sheets or how can we read multiple sheets using regular expressions and then how can we centralize the metadata and for sure dynamic schema can be used also for Microsoft Excel files then we have JSON files so we have uh, very different types of algorithms to parse JSON files uh, because we can store even very complex objects using JSON files with multiple with multiple granularities and uh, type of a drilling down approach so we have uh, different approaches as you guys can see in the screen on, on the screen and how we can basically centralize the metadata for JSON files and once again a quick recap of talent flat files parsing so these three different components are going to be used and this is basically delimited files so we have a t file input delimited component and then we have a t extract limited fields these two are the major i would say the heart of parsing flat files and then delimited files so it means we want to parse every single column separated by some 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 value and in the second place we have t file input full row so we are going to read a file row by row and then we can parse the row later on using different strategies and different components we can discuss that in the tutorial later on and in the third place let's suppose if we have a file which we want to read completely as a single string and this one we can use uh, in this case we can use t file input raw and there can be many use cases for this for example if we want to read particular content from different files and then we want to send it to a customer using an email or maybe we want to write it into the database so we, have, we, we could have some hard-coded big messages or contents so we can read entire file and then we can process it accordingly and then we have talent dynamic schema so 
if we're not sure how many columns or if we haven't defined this schema in a static way and we want to read it in a completely on the fly dynamic approach so we can use this dynamic schema option and maybe some of you guys might not know that this is a feature in the paid version of talent so talent enterprise has this feature in the free studio you guys cannot see this dynamic option and then in talent microsoft excel files we have this component dfile input excel then talent json files parsing so we have two major components one for extracting right at the time when we read the data and second is for extracting later on during the execution and yep sample CS uh, sample JSON file along with the components that we will be using to parse these files now let's dive into talents and explore how we can how can we manage the configuration settings of each of these components so we are in talent now and in the first place let's take uh, flat files csv files and i have a csv file i didn't take a very big or complex csv file so we can see this is comma separated and we want to read it inside talent and we want to parse it accordingly and so we could have different uh, cases inside uh, for a csv file for example the data could be uh, could be enclosed using double quotes and we could have multiple values inside those value for example in this case so we have some uh, some spaces that we need to trim and we have the data that's separated by commas and we have these five six different columns we can we have multiple data types integer and blah 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 but think it a different way for for basically managing it inside talent so in this case we have only five columns but let's suppose if we if you have like 50 columns so generally when you are working with talent you need to define the schema in a static way for example let's let's have this component this is the component for parsing delimited files and in this case we basically start defining the columns one by one for example column one this is going to be a string and then second third fourth but this is a very hectic and very naive approach it doesn't work while working with big files so we need to we basically want to detect the schema automatically for this case you guys uh, could go to metadata and here you have file delimited and one one basically uh, real benefit of working with metadata is that you guys can uh, reuse it in multiple integration jobs so you just define it once reuse it multiple times so it's a centralized approach and it's a single point of update single point of failure single point of success or whatever you was uh, you guys want to call it but this is like just we need to make the updates at only one point so let's give it a name let's call it csv underscore file one and then next and now basically we need to select the file which is stored somewhere on the machine and there we go now we have the file and we have the data of the file which we can see without parsed and next so here we need to set the configuration settings for example so we know that the delimiter is a comma it's standard end of line and we are using csv options like we have text and closure which is double quotes we basically do not have any escape character and then we have the first column as the header we would like to skip empty rows we do not want to limit the data and set heading row as column names and then we can refresh the data and let's see 
so perfect so now we can see we have these five columns properly parsed and we have the data split it in multiple columns and this is the data that's directly coming from here we did not we have not defined the schema manually it's a completely automatic detection of the schema and in the next uh, level we can even cross confirm if we want to so generally it detects itself if it's a date if it's a string or integer in this case it has properly detected it to be integer and strings and we have the lengths and precedence and if we want to keep it null or not and now we have it and then basically we select finish and now we have the centralized metadata created here then let's open a uh, norm okay and maybe one one more suggestion or recommendation from my side so when you guys work with integration jobs so it's preferable that you guys use a pre-job component and a post-job component so this makes the this makes the flow or the design more clear and we use pre-job component for 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 example opening the connections setting up some parameters and then we have the post job for committing the data inside the database or maybe closing connections or maybe sending emails or just finalizing and uh, making the final entries in some control tables so it's more clean and this is more easily maintainable so there we go now let's start working with the integration job and the parsing okay so now here you have two different types one is property type and one is schema so we would like to use the schema from repository which is basically the central location and here we have to select the file file delimited csv file 1 and the metadata would okay good and so the schema is now coming from the centralized location second is the property type property type means the configuration settings would we like to define it ourselves or do we want to just get it from the centralized location so we right now we would like to get it from the repository so there are less chances of errors when we go for this approach so now you can see you cannot update it here if you click somewhere you will get an option that it's generally not allowed but we can either update the repository connection or maybe we can change it to built-in property so we just cancel it and yep so th these are the basic settings for parsing a CSV file you guys can go through uh, I would say these were two important aspects that I thought are worth explaining and let's see what we have in the advanced settings so if I if you would uh, if you guys have noticed so we have one field in which we have some extra spaces that we want to trim and we can trim it right away before even passing the data to the next component trim all columns and that's it for now let's run the integration job and we would like to see the parsed data perfect so we have the data properly parsed and you guys can notice that these three cities are also properly trimmed so we know we don't have any leading or trailing spaces next to them which is sort of great the next thing I would like to discuss so most of you guys will be using these uh, this D file input delimited component but maybe you're not aware about if you guys have some inconsistent records in your schema and you would like to capture them somehow and you want to process them somehow for example currently so this schema is defined in such a way that the first column is integer and the next all columns are strings but let's suppose if we have uh, we have a next entry we, we just enter some dummy details so in this case we have the first column which is violating the principle that it should be an integer and now for this case I okay maybe let me deactivate these ones that I 
I'll explain them later on. So let me update the repository because I previously created these connections and now I would like to update them so that we have the updated data good so we have the data now and we can basically have a look on the schema that we have so we can view schema and we can see that the serial number is an integer and you guys might be knowing about the triggers and the data the data flow uh, triggers so this is a normal trigger and this is a reject trigger for example in this case if I hover on it so I can see reject or iterate so this one is a normal data flow trigger not a trigger basically but this is the normal data flow and this is a reject path and let's execute it and we would like to see the rejected records in a separate flow and the consistent records in a separate flow so that we can handle them accordingly so this is this is the first flow wait a second yep so we have this reject path and in this path we can see we have already got the error serial number which was supposed to be an integer g is getting the value null because it does not have the right consistent value and then we have the next columns which are parsed correctly and then we have the error message couldn't parse value for column serial number in row 3 value is a a a a and details is number format exception for input string blah 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 so this is how we get the error message and we get the records that are not consistent and then we can process them accordingly sometimes the rules for schema consistency are more strict for example uh, not only the data types but also the lengths of the different values we would like to take into account so in this case you uh, so if you're using this t file input delimited and maybe one thing if you want to uh, capture the rejected records then you need to check this option check each row structure against schema and even if you set this option you're not going to handle the length length problems so for this case there is another component which is this t schema compliance check uh, check so this is a more advanced component for validating the schema structure and if you define some particular lengths for particular fields they'll also be taken into account for example so here i have defined the lengths it should be 8 10 15 and 31 and so whatever comes into t schema compliance check is then moved on as the clean data and this inconsistent data and now we can see that the second column should contain length 8 so maybe in this case let me add some further characters now the length 8 has been exceeded and we should be capturing this this problem using t schema compliance check so if we if we have a look on this integration job so 19 rows have been passed on here and one row has been moved to the reject path and which was this one row this was exactly the row which has additional length we can even see it here in the console let's get it good so here we have it first name exceed max length which is supposed to be 8 and the serial number okay no sorry okay these, these are rest details but first name exceed max length so if you guys are more strict on the schema validation and schema consistency checks I would propose you guys to go and explore this t schema compliance check 
this is pretty handy because data integration is not about simply setting up the data integration pipelines and just getting the data from source to target it's way more than that and it's, it's a lot about validation and accuracy so explore this component and have a look if you guys have any queries you can either comment down on the, on this video or maybe you can write write me a personal email you can see my email address in the in the video uh, description section okay so then we have two more components I would say let me speed up good so one component is T file input full row so in this component we are just getting the entire row so here we have the configuration settings defined looks great okay so so normally when we get full row then we need to later on parse it somehow in some of the cases and we should know how we could parse so if, if you read the data using a t file input delimited you need to parse it right away before moving it on but if you want to parse some delimited content during the flow or in the middle of the flow then you have a separate component which is t extract delimited fields and here you can specify the field separator and yeah the rest of the details and then we can move the data to the next component so for example in this component we can if you click on this row four line and you see the settings so you can see it's only one column that's being passed on to the next component this is a string and this is the entire row and this is passed here and now when if we click it here we see the settings so we can see these are five columns and these are basically uh, these are ba basically parsed in this component you guys can have a look on the schema and you will get to know so one full row is coming in five columns going out because they are delimited at this point and this is the field that needs to be delimited and lastly we have uh, another component t file input full raw full raw we can read the file using a string or a bytes array or a the string or not the string this is a stream and then we can just pass it on to the next component we can uh, we can convert its type we can uh, then write it somewhere we can process it somehow uh, but yeah if we want to read the entire content it's it's going to be read using this uh, this component so uh, I would say that's it about the flat files now we move on to the next uh, next section of our video which is a dynamic schema and for me also this has been quite interesting it's a pretty powerful feature and once again this is not available in the free edition but it's available in the paid licensed and enterprise edition and there are a lot of use cases when big companies or medium sized companies are moving on uh, towards the paid subscriptions and then they pay for such features and they're pretty powerful and this saves a lot of time it's it's a lot about reusability it's a lot about maintainability and so without further details let's dive in so what exactly is dynamic schema so let's suppose if you have a csv file like this and you know there are five columns uh, so inside the integration job you need to define these five columns in the schema and then you proceed forward but there are some cases when we are working with multiple files let's suppose 10 files and every file has a different schema and we don't know what schema every okay we know what schema every file has but we do not want to hard code in our integration job what schema every file has so we are going to detect the schema on runtime and then later on we process them accordingly so I would say examples will clear things for you guys uh, maybe let me just deactivate these ones and we work on the first one good so t file input delimited and so here we have the file we have the configuration settings and if we move on it uh, 
in the schema so when you're reading a file using dynamic schema keep in mind that you can define some of the known columns in the first place and the dynamic schema column always comes at the very last column and then this dynamic column it can read 10 50 100 or n number of columns so I just set it up as dynamic and just simply forget whatever you see here just even forget what you see there and that's it then we move the data to the next component uh, if we execute it we'll see all the fields uh, displayed on the console and if you guys have noticed I have uh, defined the separator and those configuration settings so this is comma delimited data and now the program knows that these are one two three four and five fields and it has even taken into account this text closure stuff and the uh, okay trimming part we didn't specify so it is not but if we specify it, this is going to be uh, let's uh, let's make it more crispy uh, I would say dynamic schema is very powerful for data migration uh, projects so when we, we want when we want to migrate data from uh, so from one place to another or one database to another and uh, let's suppose we have uh, 10 or 50 tables that we need to replicate to a different uh, target location on a regular basis so we do not have time to manually define the schema of every single table so for those cases I've, I've created a very simple use case so we use the fixed flow input component and we define all the table names we have all the table names now here then we pass on the data uh, these names to the next component which is tflow to iterate and in this component we have a global variable which will be iterating through the rest of the components and it will be in every iteration the table names that are coming from the previous component will be passed on so in the first iteration first table will be passed on to the rest of the components and then the second third fourth so then we have this t oracle database input component and in this we are going to be having the query select static keep in mind make it select static because we don't want to define the number of columns and this employee this is going to be coming from a variable and here we will basically pass on that global variable uh, by the way this is not the right format to define the variable here uh, but the variable is going to be coming at this point and we select the data from the global variable in the schema we have uh, just make one column and give it the field dynamic and then we pass on all the dynamic data to the next component which is database output component and then we specify the table output name this output table name should also be coming from this initial component and so we know the source table name we know the target table name and we we do not want to know the number of columns or the columns themselves and they will be then moved on and you can see it's dynamic this is dynamic and insert now we have multiple options if you want to uh, truncate the table if you want to recreate drop or could be any option and that's it when we run it then we have the data from A to B completely migrated and we just introduced four components and we can use them for 50 tables 100 tables and this is like two minutes effort and you can save a lot of time with this and this is pretty powerful it identifies itself all the tables all the columns and the data types and simply migrates all the data from A to B this is about databases and when you guys are working specifically about dynamic schema then it's worth explaining that we have uh, these two two components one is T write dynamic fields and the second one is T extract dynamic fields so yeah maybe let's talk using a use case So here we read the data from from the file and 
let's suppose we already know all the columns that needs to be parsed and then in the second which is dwrite dynamic fields we simply so maybe let me show it like that so we get five columns and then here we are passing on only one column okay two columns so this is the known column serial number and these are all the dynamic columns so four columns have been just merged into one dynamic column and then we pass it on to the next component here we have dx track dynamic fields and in this case we are going to be uh, we're going to be splitting this dynamic column into these three further columns that's it when we print the data the, the data is going to be so there could be different use cases we read the data in the form of dynamic column then we parse it on later on or maybe we have the data already known we want to write it as dynamic and we process it later on and uh, basically the same and maybe some of you guys might be wondering how could we how could we identify the header and based on that we we know which schema is it so that we can process it accordingly so the first first uh, row is always the header when you read this header and you should know then that the first number is serial number the second is first name last name street blah 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 so based on that we identify which file is that and what schema type does this is and then we can pass it on to the corresponding components which will later on be using them so in short we use only one component for reading files of 50 different schemas and then those uh, those dynamic schemas are then passed on to some other components where we have the logic and then we identify which schema is it so schema 1 move it on in the first to the first to these components schema 2 move it on to these components or make some generic logic working with these to even reduce the complexity with them and if we want to work with the, the custom code so here we have the file we read the data and we write dynamic fields and then we have this T Java component and here I've added the code for you so when we would like to parse the dynamic column to fields then so you have uh, the dynamic data type and then we have columns and then you get the data from the previous component and then you loop over this dynamic column and in this case this is containing four values uh, okay not four but basically five values so one two three four and five what's what's being mentioned here so this loop is going to run five times and every time we are parsing so we can get the name of the column we can get value and we can get the data type and then we can process it we can just add some data or it could be could be anything so custom code is also a way more way more powerful than than the normal components so you guys can use these or maybe you guys can use that and this this, this makes the life easy working with the dynamic schemas then in the third place we have Microsoft Excel files I think I should have some water good so Microsoft Excel files and everyone is working with Microsoft Excel files so we have a we have a tabular structure rows and columns we should know the starting column and the ending column and we should know the different sheets and every sheet has a unique name the names can be identified using regular expressions or maybe hard coding the names so if I open the file input Excel component I can see I need to specify the name here and if I want to read a uh, one particular sheet then I can give the name of that sheet and or name or position so name hard coding is March 29 and this is then going to pick the third sheet or maybe if we want to if we want to use regular expressions so we can mention like starting uh, starting location and then we have Feb then dot strike mean any number of characters and then dollar is the ending statement so all sheets which have feb 
as a substring or needed to be considered so we could have for example all sheets which have 2019 as a substring so these three sheets will be read so you can either read, read it through the regular expressions or it could also be simply hard coding or simply specify one and when you use some regular expression then always take the option so that the so that uh, the system knows and it processes it accordingly and then we can either specify all sheets and then we we did everything and we have the limit and keep in mind if you're working with multiple sheets and for example in this case we have uh, three sheets and I specify all sheets and I specify limit 10 so don't consider that limit 10 is applied on every single sheet it's applied in total and only 10 sheets will be read uh, only sorry and only, only tell only 10 records will be read and that also from the first sheet and then we have the schema here so we can even uh, centralize the metadata of the schema for example you guys can work on that in the similar way and yeah you have the schema I, I simply just followed the same process just go through it and you guys will have the have the understanding about it okay so now let's start working on JSON files and I have a very simple JSON file uh, I've prepared for you guys and I would say let's explain complex things in a simple way that would be more fun and that would be more easy to grasp so so this uh, is a JSON file with one object known as store inside this we have a name address and then we have goods goods itself is a big object which has one object known as book which is an array itself containing two objects and then we have bicycle which contains three different fields so we have multiple options to read uh, data from a JSON file it could either be an absolute address for example store dot name or maybe store dot goods dot book dot type and then we read the data so if you open a TE file input JSON component so you will see that there are three different options JSON path X path or JSON path without loop and each of them has a have a different use case so let's consider JSON path without loop we want to go and use the absolute address to pick the fields right away like a dot b dot c and we get c right away so we define the schema using edit schema and then we have the columns three columns and here we need to specify the JSON path query for example dollar dot store dot name and then we have it so we can run it and we can see the results sometimes the compiler is slow it takes quite a while but anyways we have the data now so we can see we have store name store address bicycle type and then we have these three details uh, yeah good let me see if I have the limit applied here okay anyways this is great so this is the name of the columns and this is the data so we we pick the data using an absolute address for example name address and then bike type simply so now let's go on to the next uh, next use case which is using loop array so so yeah this is basically the uh, this is this is the this is the first option once again JSON path and we we specify the JSON path and on top of that we specify the loop JSON query so if, if we have array objects inside the JSON path and we want to get all elements of the array object then we need to specify that object here this is the address of the object for example store.goods.book and then we have static it means array needs to be applied so we can see here store.goods.book and book is an array and then this data will be p 
picked and then it will be mapped against this which is also known as the denormalization so we have here book title category and author uh, and the price good so these are the four columns which are coming from this array and the output of this script is going to be one row and second row parsed separately in the schema you guys can already see we have specified here now execute it and then we expect to see two rows perfect so this is the data that's coming from the loop or the array okay now the now the third use case will be uh, when we would like to read the data which is placed in the in the first place and all the array objects we want to basically we want to iterate over all array objects in the data we would like to uh, denormalize against the initial name and address maybe I run it and then it would be more clear with that so uh, yeah so we need to specify a loop x path query and in this case we put the loop on on that particular object which is an array and so we specify that store goods and book book is an array and then we have inside this array we have title category author and price so these will be taken from the book and the iterations uh, will be performed on number of times the objects exist that in that particular object and then we want to get store name and store address but we backtrack two addresses or two times and we specify that address and name needs to be backtracked but if you consider this as reference then you can see the root of this JSON object is at this point in the very start and we need to backtrack two times from book so that we reach root and there we have the store name and store address and let's execute it and see how the data is parsed with, with these configuration settings perfect so this is this is the array which is being parsed into four different columns and then this data is deduplicated this is basically duplicated for those array objects if this array would have contained 100 objects then those unique 100 objects would have been coming here on the left and these this is the store name and store address which is the same for all of these objects so they simply get side by side and and this is how we ma map it okay and not all of the times we are parsing the data using the file input components so there are times when we want to extract JSON fields uh, in the middle of an integration job during program execution somewhere in between and for this one we have this component t extract json fields and uh, this component uh, cannot be the first component it always needs to be somewhere in between so that data is supplied to it and then it takes the data and then it parses it and then processes it accordingly so t file input json component json path without loop and then we read the data and you can see so this book goods dot book this is an object in itself so so now, now the use case is that we have a json file which is very big and which has uh, some of the data which can be accessed directly with a with a absolute address and we have some of the data which is uh, containing array uh, in which has multiple objects inside and we want to simply uh, 
parse those objects and then we want to reflect them against all of the uh, corresponding fields so for that case we we read the normal normal uh, absolute address columns using this JSON path without loop and you specify store dot name store dot address goods dot bicycle dot type and then you have it but this book this is an array itself and you can see when we when we see this t extract JSON fields component so here we specify that we want to take this book and we want to work we want to put the looping pointer in the at the root of this book and then we s we basically delimit these uh, not delimit but we want to parse these four columns and then we have the data separately so let me run it and then I explain what I mean from this use case perfect so in the first place we read the data which can be accessed using the absolute address store name store address bicycle type and then we have book but book cannot be parsed in the first place because it's an object itself which is an array and which have multiple objects inside it so the granul granularity is much more in case of book so this component we supplied to another component uh, so, so this object we supplied to another component which is this extract JSON fields component and then it takes this one and then it parses it well now we have these two books which are basically residing in this in this book object so once we have uh, the data which can be parsed directly and once we have the data which is parsed using a looping array pointer then we can later on combine it so make it simple parse the data which can be parsed using the absolute address in the first place and store it somewhere or just redirect it somewhere and then take all the data which needs to be parsed using an array and then redirect it in a second second flow and then later on you can simply join them and you can denormalize them and you can just map it against each other or we can then process it there are so many different components which can help us with merging and joining and simply mapping so this is how you can parse JSON files. Don't forget if you guys have any query, simply put it down in the comments or maybe send me a personal email and then I'll try to respond you guys as fast as possible. So that's it about the video and thanks a lot for watching the video. If you have any question for sure get in touch and have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next video.